Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another Halo Season 2 Episode 3 review. This is going to be full spoilers. We're going to do our best to dissect it. We are a little bit sleep deprived, so bear with us. We're going to do the best we can <laughs> under these circumstances. But I have back here Busy. What's up, Busy? What's up, man? I'm happy to be back. I mean, hey. the first two to be able to talk about those with you. And then now have another episode, which we all, you know, we both have some interesting thoughts about. It's it's pretty interesting. I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, the fact that you are saying excited in tandem with Halo is, we already won. <laughs> we already won. Heck. And I mean, <laughs> for those who aren't familiar with me, I mean, hey, uh, Sam knows what he's talking. He Well, he's familiar with a lot more than I am. I know nothing. So when it comes to like the plot points and stuff like I'm just everything's coming to me and I have no idea what's going on. So when I see something that's exciting and something that could lead into something huge, it, it's drawing my attention. So like <laughs> the fact that I'm like having all of these questions and seeing all this stuff, it's just making me want to ask more and want to see more, you know, it's, it's been, it's been exciting. Yeah. This is a good episode. Um, it's weird because is it Ackerman? What's his what's his last name? Ackerson. Ackerson is such an interesting character. And we continue to applaud the actor. He's killing it. Yeah, Joseph Morgan is is he's crushing it, truly. Uh, because you love to hate him. Like you you're you're realizing more and more every knew, episode. He knew so much about what was going on. And at the same exact time, and I said it last episode, is that he's playing the odds. Um, based on the conversation he had with his dad, based on the conversation he had with Halsey in this episode, it can be inferred that even, even the conversation he had with John, um, and, uh, Keys, that he was aware of what was going on, probably post, uh, communicating with, uh, Cortana, mm-hmm. trying to attain information from her, trying to get a gauge on what the odds were. That's why he keeps going on different simulations. He was talking about simulations that Cortana had given him. And Cortana estimated realistically, probably, that the Covenant were already here. And what were their odds of being able to combat them? And at this point, I mean, if we go off the first episode, how John was cornered with all these, you know, elites with swords that have cloaking, there's not that many, there's nothing can make you believe that they're going to actually make it. So truthfully, from a statistic standpoint, he's not wrong, but the way he's going about it, he's like, I'm going to minimize, you know, mass panic. I'm going to infer that there's like a loss in the chain command. Chief is like, you know, either one, possibly a traitor or two lost his mind. So I can project off of that so I can get out. And the man literally is just trying to get his way to get out. Now, I think, I think he's trying to get to Halo. I think he's trying to get to the major weapon um, because it was something he said to Halsey. It was like, I think your Spartans are going to be the building blocks to get me what I need. And it's weird because he he didn't have any remorse for the Cobalt team getting just wiped out. Um, Dude, that was that got me so tight to see that like he's. Oh, did you know about this? And the fact that he finally stood up for John in that moment. And even though it said that he did that earlier, he's like, I'm the only reason you're not court martialed to see him actually do it. And for him to be like, 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 so did you actually know about John's concerns? Like, did you know that they were legit? And for him to kind of call out keys and be like, Hey, like the, uh, accusation is, you know, hurting my feelings, you know, like he was just trying to play it stupid. It was just like, dude, like, like you got to be able to see through his BS. Like it's clear that this dude knows so much more. It, it's it's just been ridiculous. But I feel like him ditching Reach is just a clear indication, or they should be at the point where his calls and what he says from this point on should not matter. Should not matter. The fact that Keith stood behind, like dude, man, he's a real one. But like at the end of the day, bro, dude, it's just getting me so aggravated that we still have people following Atkinson. It's just so crazy. I'm starting to remember some things from the games. And if it's going a route that is going, this is about to be a really rough next episode. That's all I'm going to say. Probably rough next two episodes, to be honest with you. 
Um, but <laughs> but we can circle back. But I just wanted to say that you know I think that Joseph Morgan and his plot points with his character is being unpacked all throughout this episode. Even got a time where he communicated with his dad. We didn't know if it was a clone. We didn't know if it was dad. But they had some really close conversations. I think his dad may be dealing with like an illness, possibly Alzheimer's. And, you know, he has a closeness and a vulnerability with his dad. We also find out that Julia, that the person that Halsey was interacting with, she was going to be a test subject to posture to be a Spartan. And for whatever reason, she died. She she just didn't make it through the procedure. Um, but for them to kind of pay that off, even at the end of the episode with bringing Julia back for the dad to have his final moments with her yeah. and effectively like him killing his dad. Um, I feel like not, in a way it's him finally releasing both of them. You know what I'm saying? More like, you know, cutting loose ends. Because the thing is, why should he have had to kill his dad? Like, what did his dad have in his mind that he had to die? You know what Honestly, I'm saying? I think it was the same thing like his dad kept saying, like, kill them before they get me. And I think Atkinson truly believes that Reach is doomed. I think he truly believes that. So I think, like... He thinks if the Covenant gets a hold of his dad, his dad's going to have a terrible death. You know what I'm saying? Um, as for the whole Spartan thing, like, you know, the remorse, if Julia was truly being built up to become a Spartan, it makes sense why he doesn't, you know, he had no remorse during, you know, that whole corp scene. Because it's like he could truly despise them and have like this hatred towards them that, yeah, I feel like we've seen a little bit of it. But, you know, it could be so much more and so much deeper, you know, rooted. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's going to yeah. be even crazier of a reveal later on. And um, I'm I'm super curious to see what or how far it goes. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. Like, he wants to use them like his weapons, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he has no emotion towards them. He's going to fake in front of them. He's going to try to manipulate them. If you look at how he's handling uh, Key... Okay. Um, Kai. 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 I, got that, <laughs> I got that wrong so bad. Um, Sleep Kai, and, plan, Kai and, yes, it definitely is. Kai, last episode, she kind of was like, you know, getting strung along a little bit. But then once they got to where they got to and Chief was quote unquote wrong, she started to kind of get up and, and to uh, Chief's face and like, no, you got to stop, stop doing this. And she went right back to him. And basically was like, I'm sorry. Like, he's like, well, you're apologizing for her. like you were supposed to tell me up front. Like he just started gaslighting her and using her and manipulating her. And by the end of this, regardless of what happens, like, I'm surprised that he didn't like invoke her to kind of be like, I need you to go on a special mission right now. Like I've got to go off planet. Like I'm surprised that didn't happen because that's what it looked like. He was trying to set her to be the person that's his personal Spartan bodyguard. Um, so I don't know what that means. Like, if he's gonna leave, is he really leaving all the Spartans behind? Or I mean, they didn't the show everyone on the ship, bro. They, I truly believe, like, part of me expected the camera to to reveal that Keys was there, and um, even even earlier when they were having that conversation, I thought they were finally gonna mention his daughter. I thought he was gonna say, "Pack your bags, grab your daughter, and come right. with me." I honestly expected them to do something like that. But um, I, I don't know, man. I, I definitely think he, he's got Halsey on that ship. I don't think he let her yeah. die. Yeah, because well, I mean, I assumed by him saying, you know, this is our goodbye. I truly thought, you know, he just was letting her go. He initially was, but when she, he's playing with fire. <laughs> Honestly, like they're both good manipulators, but she's a genius. The way she like emotionally manipulated him and found out his weakness, I think, was everything. That's the reason why he went back in. He was like, oh, I don't want you to be alone. It's like, Ninja, you really were going to actually get rid of her. But now you're like, maybe I can use her for something. Dude. Um, so Halsey's a beast for that. Because I was kind of just like, how the heck is she going to get out of here? And she she played that last little trump card. And I think that's her way out. I think he's not going to let her die because he wants to figure out how he can use her. Because the way he started even insinuating about her controlling them and making herself be the focal point with those devices, that was a lot. And he was kind of just like, yeah, this is my responsibility now. I'm going to do it better. But she basically let him know, like, yeah, you're not perfect. 
Like you got weaknesses too that I can see. So because I can see your weaknesses. The way she was picking them apart was so entertaining. Yeah. But I mean, like at the end, bro, when he when he left, I was like, okay, yep. I don't know if it's done, but like the fact that he's walking away, we're gonna have to wait a few scenes to see where it goes. And then they wait a little bit. And even she, you could tell she was stressed out. Like she put her head on the table, like she was feeling it. Then he walks back in, and not only like he had his like trump card or whatever you want to call it, which was uh Soren. So to see Soren come in, and I'm just like, okay, like this is what I've been waiting to see with this character. Yeah. Like, and you know, like I feel like we got more little doses of the pirate stuff, which was cool. But Soren's character, me and you both mentioned this. I felt like there was so much more. Like his character is interesting. I just felt like the place he was in just wasn't that crazy for me, you know, to 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 want to be invested. Right. So the situation he's in now with Halsey, I feel like is going to be really fun to watch. You know, like this is a situation that they're both going to be extremely like out of their element and it's going to be it's going to be crazy. I don't know. This is something I'm looking forward to for sure. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I think that that's a good switch up for him. Take him out of the whole pirate scene. Take him out of the Quan scene. Mm-hmm. Let him be a dysfunctional Spartan. Like he's still a Spartan. He just was defective. And I think it'll be very interesting for him to confront her. But at the end of the day, he may be the one that's going to protect her because if Reach is getting destroyed, like they're not going to have a lot of time to talk. Like them jokers gonna be coming up in there, and yeah, I I don't know. Um, now we do got to talk about the the pirate situation because Soren's uh, wife kind of strolling around, like trying mm-hmm. to figure out what's going on, being as obvious as all get out. And I mean, she comes to the conclusion with Quan's help that you know they definitely sold him out, and they're they're trying to go after her next, and. Quan had already been talking with the kid. Quan could have got the kid out a long time ago. I don't know what she was thinking. But either way, yeah. she went around her way about doing it and telling the mom. And then they both try to go and escape. They get I to kinda, the ship. I kind of get it though. I mean, yeah, I feel like with Quan, they've kind of skipped a lot of steps with like some of her development. I feel like there's a lot that I want to see. That, you know, like some of the skills she has now, I'm just like, how the how the hell did that happen? You know what I'm saying? But like um at the end of the day, I feel like she considers Soren's family the last, you know, connection she has of any family. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, even if she lets one of them sacrifice himself, it's not, it's not a win. It's not a win. You know, yeah, she could have gotten away, but it's just not something. You, as it, as you see, I feel like she would rather sacrifice her humanity than lose anybody else she cares about. Because, like, after she did kill those people, she looked broken. Like, like she looked like... Even though I feel like we've seen her do this before, she's just, it looked like it was her first time killing. She looked terrified. I don't know what it was, but like there was just that look. I don't yeah, know. She she reminded me of Ellie. Oh, uh, okay. The second, second to the last episode when you, you know what you got in you to survive. Yeah. But at what, but at what cost kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, because honestly, I, I halfway thought there was a freaking elites, the covenant. I was like, oh snap, it's the noise. No, and yeah. Shout out to them for like like the fake out. Yeah, that was a huge fake but, out. But but it being Quan, it just like I wanted this, I want to see how she was able to to take them all out. Like, um, I, I don't know. It, it just kind of caught caught me off guard a little bit, even with what's her name, Layra. Like, mm-hmm. I was surprised that she was e- able to get those licks off. Like she literally hit every single one of them. Yeah, they ended up kicking her ass at the end, but she got a she got her hands on everyone that was there. Like you know when she was yeah. uh first causing a distraction. So it's like I truly want to see what quan has been up to. I want to see like surprisingly I never thought I'd say that, but I really want to see what's going on there. Yeah, I feel like that Soren would have had to have given his wife and Quan some like tactical training cuz it's coming from somewhere and it would make sense that she would push that to make sure he got it. And I can see that coming from the wife too. Mm-hmm. Um, because the wife won't give up nothing. And the way they staged that, I was like, how are they about to play this out? I, was, I just knew the covenant were freaking about to rip them to shreds. And then they faked this out with the blood splatter. We look around and like Quan's just out there just hovering. Yeah. Somebody came out, she took her down so quick. 
Dude, and I was like, I really thought like good? like the way that shot was with her like you know, and then just the way everything was organized in that scene, the way they pushed her into the 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 lock, whatever the airlock. I thought that was going to be her protection because at first when we started hearing that, we were like, okay, we're going to see her die. Everyone in this room is going to die without a doubt. Right. And um, then when they separated her, I'm like, you know, this is probably going to be what sep- what keeps her alive. Her being in this airlock room is probably what's going to keep her alive, you know, with the Covenant, you know, like, and um, then we end up, like, again, Quan being the one, it does make sense that, you know, she did come back for her. But to be for her to be able to you know take them all out and off screen especially yeah we got to say see her take out the one that really mattered so I did like that yeah but um still I just have so many questions yeah like I don't know because she I mean the last episode she put in that work too like yeah she with the parkour and all that nonsense yeah I was yeah. Kind of- that they were kind of like, you know what? We're just I feel like, did her... we miss something? Was there a hidden episode? <laughs> like... So you remember last episode, like her and Hor and Surin went back and forth. Yeah. Like, and that's why I said I'm led to believe that he, you know, not took pity on her, but he wanted to train her to help protect mm-hmm. her and whatnot. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, but another thing in this episode that was fascinating, outside of the fact that, you know. Kai is just working with this man and mm-hmm. it's just like, come on, bro. But Riz, she goes back to my man Tobias Will. Um, and I, I'm so conflicted with that because I think she had feelings for him. And that's how it felt. It and really- then she realized she had to pivot because I was kind of like, she could either be one there for him or she really could try to get another dose from what we find out is his husband or yeah. Is it husband or boyfriend? I can't remember. I'm assuming. Did they ever say? Yeah. I'm a, yeah. Um, I was thinking like, Oh, she probably wanted another treatment from him. So I was like, I, I was torn, but I think from the body language, she was caught off guard and she didn't know that he had a partner. I mean, and I, I think, was caught off guard, bro. <laughs> but I think the thing about it, if you think about it, he's a Spartan. So that's probably the first Spartan that she's seen in any kind of relationship and so for yeah. for, no, for him fair. to say to her last episode like there's a different way she she brought she brought cough confidence and uh, comfort in in seeing that relationship but um i don't know where that storyline is going because it's kind of like out of left field because it would have been one thing if he, she just started to draw feelings towards him but now it's like his perspective on how to run his life is something that she's going to be drawn to so i i don't know what that looks like as far as their try relationship friendship whatever's going on I, I don't know what's going on with that i don't know you got any comments on it i don't know i think look i don't know maybe they hinted at it in episode two it just went right over my head but like literally as soon what, his as his relationship yeah his relationship no they didn't, they didn't, they didn't yeah because of course we were introduced to both characters and then um of course, in this episode, we end up seeing that they're in a relationship, and it just, I don't know what it was. I mean, it just caught me off guard. Like, I i, I feel like, why not, like, show it in the first, in the, in the, I mean, in the second episode? And, um, because, of course, we're all coming up with these theories with Riz, like, like, you know, she finally has someone that she can connect with, that she can be real with. I mean, this character was literally, like, helping her hide the injury, you yep. know, when he was testing her, and she was like, ah, and she was like please don't let no one see and he's like i got you you know like it it seemed like they were building something or building up to something and of course i'm not i mean it doesn't matter to me that they're not in a relationship or they didn't have a relationship but like it just it really did catch me off guard because i'm like hey riz is finally gonna have more of a uh you know more development yeah to see her have a connection with someone that's it's not you know work related you yeah. know, and she can still have that. You know, it doesn't yeah. need to be romantic. The fact that she has someone to rely on, I feel like it's still going to be a, a cool opportunity to kind of show her personality a little more. And, um, you know, I feel like with the Spartans, that's really, really important, specifically with the last uh, shot that we had in, at the end of the episode with uh, Venic. Uh, mm-hmm. We ended up seeing that, you know, he's kind of catching on on his own. Yeah. And we haven't really seen much of him at all. Like, right. We see him with the squad, but we're seeing Kai do her own thing, kind of 
becoming like you know trusting her own instincts becoming her own person questioning things on her own we're seeing riz kind of being independent doing her own side thing uh of course john we he's doing lord knows well, whatever what. whatever yeah he whatever he does and then we just got venic th there which i'm really excited to see more of him he's a character yeah. that i like like some of his comments have been so hilarious like i cannot get over the fact that you know he he told one of the soldiers if you don't get out of my wear way i'm gonna wear you like a sock so shit like that shit is just so funny to me bro like i want to see more of this dude and it's like it's not even a competition so it's like i'm waiting for them to do it but then at the same time, I feel like, oh, if they do throw it at us all at once, it's kind of a hint that maybe one of these characters are bound to go. And at this rate, I feel like the way they're pushing the development of, of some of these Spartans, I feel like one of them is going to go by the end of the season. Especially the fact that they wiped all of Cobalt, like yeah. without even showing. That's ridiculous to me, man. Yeah, like, it's crazy. There's going to be another Spartan that's coming into the fray for sure. They, they're they definitely wiping somebody out. Um, I I... I'm concerned that Kai is going to be a new pseudo master chief for okay. my mans. And he's going to have some surrounding Spartans to use. Like he's got some yeah. other Spartans somewhere. Like, there's no way that he doesn't. I don't the know if they're going to be clones. She, but... The fact that she even brought up on her own the, um, what was it? The, uh, you know, like you don't even need to put it into the other silver, silver team. I'll do it on my own. Like, she's volunteering to go, like, solo. Like, yeah. that worried me, bro. I'm like, okay, yeah. like, it's one thing to do it for a mission or two, but it's going to get to her head. Like, something's yeah. going to happen. She's going to realize she doesn't need a crew or think she doesn't need a crew, and it's going to be a whole thing, dude. You're, trust, you're trusting the wrong people. And nah, for real. part of that is going to that same chain of command. Like, on a normal circumstance, when it's sound judgment from leadership, then, yeah, it's okay. But if it's not and it's corruptible, then that's a whole other situation. Uh, but as far as Riz, Riz got that Riz. I think that she last episode, real yeah. real real <laughs> rap, she talked to my man Tobias, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Oh, I've got somebody that can be able to help you." Like, so that means that she didn't know. She mm -hmm. she just found out about this joint today, and they've known each other for years. So I think that was the reason why they did it like that. It was to show her shock with our shock because I think they just they didn't know. Um, but. Another thing that kind of happened is your boy John. John's he went rogue, man. Like he took his squad out there, put them in a situation, even though he was right. And he got there in front of these guys during soldiers and OSD. They were like, hey, don't go through that door. And I'm like, why are y'all stopping him from going through a door anyway? Why don't you just call them or tell them to turn back? You wait till you get right there and put them force to hand. And of course, John said, "Bro, you better get up out of my face, or I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna go through you." He got in there, and the team was like, "What do we do? What do we do? What do we do?" And it didn't matter at that point because he'd already broke the chain of command. And then from there, you know, he goes and has a conversation with Keys, and he kind of they all he didn't get court martialed, but he did get uh, suspended off of duty as well as the rest of them. Yeah, and he got relieved of his command at that time. Now he goes. And coordinates with I forget the chick's name, the original admiral. Um, and she basically was like, Do you have my proof for me? Like, can you tell me what's going on? Lo and behold, she's still working under the, the counter with the other team. Um yeah, the fact that she had all those people, like John instantly, the trust was gone immediately. Oh, yeah. it was, it was immediately. And it's kind of like John is acting very erratic because. He's concerned. It's fear. Like normally you have that thing that chip in your neck. You don't feel fear. So you don't act irrational because he's dealing with actual fear and he knows it's a real threat. He he's trying to get people to understand him mm -hmm. and no one is listening because it's so much politics. And yeah, everywhere. And, it, and it's not even just fear. I feel like it's compassion. The fact that he was so worried about Cobalt, you know, like the, the fact that he was more worried about their well-being than anything like he was like you're did you tell them what they're headed into did you tell them what their po the possibility was you know more so he knew that they were safe that they were prepared and um so like the fact that he knew that that didn't really work out i mean i feel like this dude is just feeling since he's not since these spartans haven't grown up with these emotions 
feeling all of these emotions at once must be so overwhelming, overwhelming yeah. that yeah it's technically them going insane like i i totally can understand if they're feeling the frustration the confusion the the compassion the the anger just everything at once something they've never felt i'd go crazy too yeah. so it just it, it kind of like just draws the line like like maybe he is kind of unfit at this point but at the same time he's feeling everything in the book it's nuts yeah, and the thing I just realized is that that team that intercepted them probably got there maybe hours before and re- re- they got the bodies. Yeah, it was clearly a setup. The, no, 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 no. I think that they got the bodies oh. from the Cobalt team to retrieve them back, which is okay, why. So you, so you do think that Cobalt was actually there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were there. Okay. They, they okay. were absolutely there because the way that they had the bodies lined up, they had already assessed those bodies. And they brought him back beforehand. So before yeah, the so Ackerson's the one who changed the flight logs. That's why when Keys yeah. looked at him, he yeah. was taking he wasn't taking John's word for it. Okay. That yeah, yeah that went right over my head. Okay. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that's what he did. And again, he could care less about Spartans. He's trying to use mm-hmm. them. Um the last bit of thing that happened was John. Well, let me, me backtrack. When mm-hmm. John was there. She started the girl, uh, the other soldier. I forgot her name. God, I'm spacing. Which one? We got Kai, we got Riz, we got <laughs> the, the regular soldier, not the Spartan. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the one with the cool brothers. His his new boo, yeah. The new boo's crazy, bro. Uh, um, let me see. Uh, what's her name? What's uh, Talia Perez? Yeah, so Perez was hearing something while they were there and she started tapping with the beat because she'd been listening in from the last conversation she had mm-hmm. with him. And then she heard the signal and got information. And, and what we find out later, cause John goes and meets her at the church at the fun. She bet he went, John initially went to her mom's house. And mom was like, look, please leave my daughter alone, bro. Like, she She's like, yeah, the devil follows you is what right. she said, bro. I'm please, like, please, please, please. I mean, she ain't wrong. Um, but, um, <laughs> He goes, and she probably knows like that she was like what was going on with her. I mean, she clearly is freaked out, so yeah. her mom probably did find out. Damn, yeah. bro, it's nuts. Um, but anyway, he goes to the church, meets mm-hmm. her, and she finally expresses, like, yeah, did you see the girl? And he said, Ninja, what? You yeah, I saw the girl. She's like, she's real, right? I, he's like, Yes. And this man's like, he's having like a moment right now. And and she just happens to be there in the church with the uh, the signal and what she heard with some headphones and kind of gives it to him. And we get one of the dopest little narrations from a certain elite um, basically talking about the eradication of mankind and taking the head of their quote unquote demon, but they're talking about Master Chief, which is John. And it is such a dope little transition that prepares you for the last scene, which is John kind of takes the headphones off and she's like, they're here, right? They're actually here. And yep. then all of a sudden an explosion happens in well, outside of the church and in the in the episode. So I think it's a really freaking dope ending because you know, um, Joseph Morgan character effectively killed his dad, killed his sister again, or let his sister die, jumped off planet, and then that's when you know we got everything else. But I, I thought that that ending was so freaking strong. Uh, uh, that yeah. was it was creepy. It was a creepy that's, monologue for sure. Like the way that it kept switching from like the translation itself was mm-hmm. just such a tense. Like it was an intense moment. Like I I don't know what the hell was going on, but that <laughs> shit was it was fire, bro. Like I don't know what it was, but everything I was feeling in that moment, the way she was just talking, like like how she knew what he was saying. Like like we don't know how she knows. Like right. how the hell does she even know, bro? Like like it obviously it has something to do with the planet. I'm assuming like you know, but like I don't I don't know. But I'm just so confused. I'm so confused. But it was just the way that they handled that last moment was so good bro like this episode was definitely not a 10 but that last moment was so like i don't know man that, that sh- i don't know it just had me like at the edge it just focused 100 percent. i just love the way that they were transitioning transitioning and then kind of highlighting different characters while they were discussing 
you know, different things. You know, they mentioned something about blood. They put the camera on Quan. Um, they were talking about something something else. They put the camera on Kai. They just were switching the Venic. They were just going all over the place. And that entire monologue kind of each piece was dedicated kind of towards an, another character, if that makes any yep. sense. Yep. And it was just, I love the way they handled that, dude. Like the camera choices, everything was just, it was brilliant. I liked it. That it, was dope. it was, it was freaking fire. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I am absolutely excited to see the possibilities. That's, I, I, I wish I could gush about that, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. <laughs> um, we need to rate this. Uh, what do we rate it from A to F? Oof. Uh, I'll say B, B minus. Like, it wasn't amazing, but actually B, B plus. I don't know. It's hard. Because there were some moments that I was like, all right, but then there's some moments that I was like, damn. Like, damn. Yeah, I think that I wish in a perfect world there was an episode that didn't have the pirates. Um, yeah, but I feel like we're getting them in smaller and smaller doses, which is becoming a little more tolerable, you yeah. know? And I, I know it's going to lead to something crazy eventually, so I don't want to 100% discredit it. And then, like, unless it was incredibly boring, I think the only thing that's really turning me off from them is the fact that Quan is doing all this crap that I, I don't believe that, you know, like, I know she's capable of doing if they showed me how she, you know, I just, I want an explanation. You know what I'm saying? Just something little. Like I don't know. We'll we'll see, but I will say that the moments that they did have with Quan, with the little boy, with the mom, it wasn't bad. Mm. Like it wasn't like I was like, oh, let's get through this really quickly. So I mean, the fact that they were proving the those, entire time he was on screen, I expected him to be the reason his mom died. I truly like it wasn't it I was more just anxious the entire time. He's like, Oh, are we supposed to be scared? It's like, dude, like relax, like just <laughs> let them do her thing, bro. Like, I get your your child and you're scared, but yeah, like absolutely I I honestly felt like he was gonna be the reason she died. And then and then Quan was gonna have to be like, No, it wasn't your fault, and then there was gonna have to be this whole thing that I feel like we've seen <laughs> in all these other shows, and bro, I was getting so nervous, dude. It was killing me. Yeah. I, I rate this a B plus to A minus. I think that they're improving on the things that we have issues with and they're adding real substantial character development mm -hmm. and adding on new characters. Cause a character like Joseph Morgan's character, like he just comes out of nowhere, but yet he's working. He's a mm -hmm. new character that you don't need to know, you know, Halo Lord to be impressed by yeah. how they're handling. And even the two characters that Riz is getting involved with, they're adding so much to her character. And right. it's like something that I've been looking forward to. Like the Spartans development is the one thing I'm loving. And I feel like it's been really important to have these characters that have barely been involved make such a big impact. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's been cool. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I am curious to see what happens to the little boy when he, when, if he makes it and grows up. I think that's, that's going to be the interesting thing. But anyway, I'm going to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. um, Busy, where can everybody find your content, man? Busy Braun everywhere, man. Busy Braun YouTube, Busy Reactions on Instagram. We also got a Busy Braun Instagram, but that's like more personal stuff. You know, uh, you guys are more than welcome to follow me there. It's my everyday, just stuff like that, chilling and behind the scenes stuff. But then my Busy Reactions is just more content. So exclusive stuff, you know. So feel free to check that out. I'm um, looking forward to continuing doing not only Halo reviews, but reviews in general on this channel. So let me know if you're into that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to just talking more. It's going to be cool. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate you for coming out busy. And Always. busy is going to be doing uh, anime uh, channel reactions as well, guys. So go and check out his anime. You like our anime stuff, so you'll like busy stuff as well. I'm going to try to get him to go and check out some soul leveling, maybe we we'll really get into that. Um, <laughs> But uh, we're going to go, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe to the bell button, go to the description bar below, and subscribe to this content. And <laughs> I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Peace, people.